All right, guys. Appreciate you being here today. Just get ready to kick off game week for Boston College and a whole host of other teams throughout the country. Um, I'm sure you guys, like me, it was exciting this weekend uh, to see college football open. It was exciting to see the launch of the ACC Network. I found myself kind of glued to it throughout the weekend. You know, they had so many great things on the network and, and what that's going to do for the conference. Uh, you know, certainly I hope our fans, uh, you know, are, are, are signing up for the ACC Network because uh, I think it's uh, great for our conference. And if you're a, not just a football fan, but if you're a sports fan, the, the, the amount of quantity and, and quality of things that they have on that network is just unbelievable. So. Don't miss out on that. I mean, sign up and get the ACC network. Um, we're excited about Virginia Tech. It's a, a big opener. Um, the tradition of Virginia Tech is phenomenal. Um, they've won a lot of football games. It's a great organization. They're coming into our stadium. We have a chance to play an elite team within our conference and uh, have a great deal of respect for Justin Fuente and their whole program. And uh, so it'd be a great challenge for us. And we're, we're looking forward to it. We're excited. We've had a great preseason, um, got a lot of work done. I feel like we're on schedule in terms of our preparation um, and, and, and looking, forward to, uh, looking forward to the 4 o'clock contest. Um, so I think without me rambling on too much, I'd rather just um, open it up for some questions for you to ask me. So. Go ahead. Uh, no microphones. Uh, you have a long history with Bud Foster. It looks like he has 11 returning starters coming back. Yeah. What's the challenge? How is well, he going to have them ready? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've you know, I've, I've had the, I guess it would be good fortune, I'm not sure, about Coach Foster for a lot of years at different places I've been. But um, he's a phenomenal defensive coordinator, and he's got a good group of returning players back. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they played a lot of young players last year. And uh, we anticipate that, you know, there'll be, uh, there'll be uh, a great defense. Uh, that's their trademark uh, for years, and I wouldn't suspect that that would disappoint. You've, you've done this before in terms of opening up with the conference opponent, but it was in another country. Yeah. Uh, doing it at home and just the impact, like the, the idea that it could and does kind of set a tone for the season. What's been the message throughout the last week? Yeah. I mean, our message has really been this, that, you know, we're excited to have an opportunity to play an elite team opening day. And that's had our attention of our team throughout the winter, the spring, and certainly preseason camp. And the things that we need to focus on in this game uh, clearly are, you know, uh, making sure that we win the turnover battle, okay, making sure that we win the penalty battle. We, we want zero penalties. Um, and uh, so taking care of the football or getting the football on defense, um, not having penalties, which is a no-talent issue, um, and, and, and a high level of execution. And, of course, we feel we have to win the special teams battle. I think those things are very, very important in opening day. Um, and, and, and you have to play defense. You have to play defense. So, I mean, I think uh, we've focused on those things throughout camp. After each scrimmage, after each real practice, we evaluate how many mental mistakes occurred, uh, how many turnovers occurred. We have officials here a ton, probably two times as much as we've had in the past. Um, so a high emphasis on penalties, a high emphasis on our team on how you carry the football. You know, we have had an unbelievable emphasis for our, both sides of the ball. If we intercept the ball, how do we carry the football? You know, we talk about it as high and tight. And how, do, how, do we, how do we do that? And then, of course, we've spent an awful lot of time this year, more than ever before, in situational football. You know, so those have been a great, great uh, tools for us, and uh, they'll be huge factors in this game. How much? I mean, I know what emphasis has to be. You used the word urgency a lot in the last few weeks. But yep. It has to be on attention to detail. And mm -hmm. like I said, things, things that you just mentioned. But also, it's still an open. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm sure you've got to shake some things out, but also figure some things, some things out that you have to be sharp at the same time. What's that balance? Well, the, the thing about it is, is this, is it is a balance. I mean, you know, years ago, you tackled a ton. Most teams don't tackle very much. So you're trying to find out, okay, we've got to be prepared to tackle. But yet, we can't afford the injuries that come with too much tackling. So that's a balance that you're trying to navigate. You know, that's that's a real thing I think for every team in the country. Um, trying to trying to have a, a the speed of the game, you know, making sure that you're playing at that level. You don't go from a practice level and then the speed of the game hits you right in the face, and the speed of the game can cause turnovers. So I think there's a real balance here of trying to you know handle all those situations that come with opening day. Um, is your conditioning right? 
Um, not, I don't mean, you know, running, uh, you know, per se, like, you know, distance or whatever. It, no, football conditioning, you know, is your football conditioning. What, what happens is when you're not football, con- it's like I equate it to, I used to in high school play basketball, and you come off the football season, and you thought you were in pretty good shape. And then you go on the basketball court, and you die, you know, as a football player. You just, like, you'd be instantly gassed. You know, and, and, and in football, a lot of times, that, that's a different level of conditioning. It's kind of a game conditioning. And so when, and when you get gassed, that's when things happen with the ball. You get loose with the ball. You make mental mistakes. So, I mean, these are all the things that we're trying to address and manufacture uh, in practice right now so that we can have a clean opening day. Because as you said, opening day, sometimes you don't know what you're going to exactly get. Because, you know, no matter what you do, you're never going to – uh, manufacture the bright lights of the pressure of the day. And it's amazing to me, <clears throat> you know, what happens? Things just happen. You know, it's just, it, it, you know, you say, how, how did that happen? It happened. I mean, this is the first time in your tenure, I believe, that you had, like, a conference at home. Uh, just the magnitude of it, you think yeah. that works, the, mm-hmm. the the cross conference rival. It's a, it's a You're ruining my Thursday now. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, really, like, you know, like, because what happens is the anxiety starts to mount on you, you know, and then, you know, usually, like, to me, it's, you know, so, I mean, it is. It's real. Um, but it's fun and it's exciting, you know. Sometimes, you know, when you, you play an opener that, you know, you're supposed to really, you're heavy favorite to win in. You get, you know, it can get equally frustrating, and you can be like, you know, get sloppy, and um, this has our full attention, and it, and there is an energy level that comes with this, and I am very, we are very fortunate we're home. I think traveling on the road adds another element to that whole thing. So, <clears throat> I think, um, you know, offensively, you know, we have we have some older guys on offense too, and we have a veteran quarterback, and those things help you a little bit. Uh, how much training camp did I say to McDuff he have, and is he ready to start? You have to listen to him. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd say that's to be determined. Um, you know, um, he hasn't had a lot of reps in training camp, um, and we're trying to figure that out right now. Um, so I can't really give you a great answer on that right now in terms of Will he, won't he, how many, where is he exactly at? I think we're in that process of trying to figure that out ourselves right now. So, you know, the four tight ends you're carrying on the, on the deep, are they contrasting? Are they different style tight ends? Or are they kind yeah. of meet the standard of what you're looking for? I mean, I think they could meet the standard of playing any specific Y position. But we, we do have some mindset with them. Um, and, I mean, I think Jake and, and Hunter are kind of your, you know, traditional Ys and, and, and Christian and Karab are more of your movement guys, and Danny Dalton. But they all can play anywhere as a Y. But we play with two in every snap, you know, for the most part. So, um, we, we, you know, we're lucky that we have a, a pretty deep room there. So that's been a good thing. Coach, uh, I know Virginia Tech runs the spread uh, in their offense and sent three wide outs from a defensive standpoint. Uh, First off, I know the spread's a predominant offense now, but mm-hmm. how do you determine what personnel and what situation that you're going to co- counteract, especially with a quarterback who's got some experience back there that they have? Yeah, I mean, most teams in our league are 11 personnel. Um, you know, they have the capability of being 12 too, but most of them are 11. I just think, you know, it's, uh, you know the spread is a very general term. You know, what is their stick within their spread? I mean, what are they trying to do? You know, how much quarterback run is there? How much, um, you know, play action is there, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I just think for us, um, we run some spread in our own offense, and I've got a pretty good background in the spread offense. So, you know, we try to give a really good facsimile uh, to them using our second offense at a high speed rate. Um, you know, you're obviously looking at previous film and, seeing what it is that they've done, and we'll probably have some new wrinkles that will show up in the game like everybody else does. When you have a particular speed guy, or I know if you're running a 4-3 and you have a linebacker, you switch to five defensive backs, uh, how much does that border with the communication between them to switch on the fly or 
just in the huddle or in different set pieces that they might have? To well, I mean, I think I think down in distance has a big factor, um, as well as personnel. I mean, they could be in a ten grouping, but on third down, like everybody else, we have a nickel dime package, and and we'll adjust to match the personnel or the situation. You know, it's third and eight, you know, you're probably pretty likely to be in some form of nickel or some form of dime defense where there's more DBs on the field and, um, you know, you're going to defend that down as a passing down. So we, we have some of that in there. You know, we have the ability to play within our base group any down, and we also have the ability to substitute um, in our nickel deal and, and kind of play that any down. But that's kind of what football has become. Um, you know, there's not a lot of straight 21 teams that, you know, you're in and out of different groupings. I think, as I said, you know, we're different because we'll play it. We'll play every down in 12. And they'll play a lot of downs in 11. So, You know, uh, at the end of training camp, you mentioned the, the timetable of getting shifted out of preseason to, mm -hmm. um, to Virginia Tech. And you said, like, B-Tech Wednesday or B-Tech Thursday. How'd that timetable go with the guys with straight through? Or were there any hiccups along the way? Was there anything that got ahead of schedule? Yeah, I mean, the first day we shifted, there was, you know, it was, it was different. And different creates, you know, rough spots. Um, but I thought last Thursday we shifted into high gear VTech. The only difference was we were really dead-legged. I mean, that was what we were fighting, fatigue. Uh, we were able to get through to Friday and then give them Friday afternoon and the weekend off. Um, and I thought that was the best thing we did this year, that we gave them a couple of days, not one. They came back in today and had some zip and some legs and some energy. And I really thought, I, you know, you like everything else, right? You make decisions, and then you go back and you evaluate those decisions. Sometimes you're really excited about the decision you made, and sometimes you're not. When practice closed today, I was pretty excited about the decision we made. We looked like a good football team today uh, that had their legs back. Um, we looked totally different than we looked like on Friday when we were hanging on for dear life a little bit because we had camp legs still. So the process now during the week is to get our work done and each day try to get more and more refreshed so that we're at full, full speed on Saturday, obviously, and feeling terrific. And I think we're on schedule to do that. Uh, just with the, the game on Saturday is there in, in the build-up to it and the run-up over the last month, too, is there anything that in particular that you'll say to the team ahead of time just to either you know, get fired up or to appreciate it or for the older guys, for the younger guys, something to, something to tell them? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have a message for him. I'm not sure exactly yet what I want to say. You know, I kind of like to watch the week, you know, pan out a little bit. Um, but I really, I can tell you this. I will, I, I, my mindset right now is just cut it loose. Just cut it loose. Go. You know, we're going to have a mindset of cutting it loose. We're going to play very aggressively uh, in all three phases and uh, have some fun and let, and let it go, you know. Play hard. You know, believe in your preparation. Believe in your training. It'll be something along those lines. Um, we're not going to go into that game like, you know, jockeying. Uh, uh, we're going to go in there. We're going to run our offense. You know, we were third in the league in explosive plays last year, and we want to be explosive again. So, you know, you can rest assured that um, everything that we've prepared for will get used. Um, there's a lot of buzz around the freshman class. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I got to pronounce that name correctly. Yeah. Um, but what, what's the potential you see for that class? And, yep. I mean, how have, and also at the same time, like, what can they do and how can they contribute? You know, it's funny. You, you asked me that question. Martin and I were just talking about this, not that, you know, but 15 minutes ago. Um, so Zay Flowers is a dynamic guy, right? Uh, he's electric. You'll see a lot of him on Saturday. Um, he's got legitimate, bona fide, flat, go by you speed, and his stop start and tight turn out of cuts is. Is, is pretty pretty unique. Uh, he's got maturity and, and got real ball savvy to him. So, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see a lot of Zay Flowers. I think Sheeta uh, is a marvelous young prospect. Um, uh, his, his athletic numbers are kind of eye-popping. Uh, he's a young guy. I mean, he's not even scratching at it right now. But he's going to be uh, a force to contend with here at BC uh, in the future. But as I said, Martin and I discussed, I'm just ecstatic about 
you know, you don't, you know, like, you know, I always say to you guys, like, how, how do you really know the class you recruit, right? But having had a summer camp, you know, with them, this is a really, like, you know, like Ethan Williams, you're going to see him play a lot of football. And he missed two weeks of training camp. He was dinged up in training camp. And he came back and, like, didn't miss a beat like an older player. He's a powerful receiver. So there's a lot of these guys uh, that we're excited about. Our, defense, our young defensive front, um, you know, there's a bunch of talented guys. Now, are all those guys going to be ready to play this year? Probably not. But, but they're a very talented front. Um, you know, we have two young corners. I mean, Brandon Sebastian was a freshman last year. But, I mean, those two guys, Tate Haynes, those guys, they're, they're six foot, 195, 200-pound corners that can flat run. Um, so, uh, you know, scattered, you know, uh, along, I mean, uh, you know, I think Andrew Garwo, uh, the running back, is a, is, is a super, super talented guy. Um, Christian Mahogany on the offensive line. We, the, the class, I don't want to go through everybody. I'll forget people as I go, but there's – there's a lot of talent in this class right now, and it's very, very exciting. You know, is all that talent ready this year? No. Uh, some of it will be. Some now. Some maybe a couple, three, four weeks from now. But but walking away from training camp, legitimate class. Um, and and especially, even though I mentioned some really eye popping offensive guys, almost kind of especially on defense. You know we. You know, a lot of guys we had in defense, they're, they're, you're, you're going to see them playing in the NFL this year. And you talk about over the last couple, three years now, we've had a fair amount of players that have gone on to the NFL. So the defensive side of the ball, you know, has absorbed some losses, and that's duly documented. Um, so to have this many young, really young players that we're looking ahead to the future with right now, that's exciting. You know, it's very, very exciting. Um, even, you know, even guys that you think like, oh, they're not really young, but they are. I mean, you know. McDuffie's a young guy. Sprasio's a young guy. Uh, the two corners I mentioned are young guys. The defense, uh, Joey Lucchetti, young guy. Um, all of our interior defense alignment, we're really excited about them. Like Ryan Bitro and Kiev Bennerman. I mean, they're all young guys, but they're talented. They, you know, kind of look the way they're supposed to. You know, they're athletic, they're tough. So it's, it's you know, those are really uh, – so I appreciate your question but because those – you know, I've had a lot of fun. We have had a lot of fun, you know, coaching them. You know, again, hopefully, you know, we can get a few of them super ready, and we mentioned the ones that I think will be ready game one. Can we go to old guys now? Yeah, go. Uh, Rich Hugan found his groove? He, yeah, uh, he really has. Right I mean, Richard has, and what a, you know, he's a wonderful guy, by the way. I mean, you, spend some, you get a chance to spend some time around him. That's a really uh, fantastic story of a comeback. And uh, he's a super guy, super, super bright guy, super mature guy. And he has. He's, he's, he's had a remarkable camp. So, I mean, you know, like you said, talk about some of the old guys. Well, that's a, you know, a guy coming from a different place, a fifth-year player. Had a great, great camp. Uh, Dwayne Scott, the offensive guard center from uh, Rhode Island, he's going mean, to be a player for us. He's a legitimate player. I mean, we're excited about him. And, and, and Christian Mahoney from Miami, um, offensive lineman. Uh, great camp. Boomer, our kicker. Got a bunch of talent from Temple. Um, Danny Dalton, he's made just a ton of plays all camp long. I mean, he, is, he can run. He's athletic. He catches the ball really, really well. I mean, I mean you know, he's, he's scattered, you know, he's just all over the place. He's, he's making plays in training camp. Um, did I miss anybody? And then, of course, Zion. Zion became eligible from Davidson. And, I mean, Zion can – be as high a level players as uh, Chris Lindstrom. I mean, phenomenal player, and what a what a guy. I mean, kind of a real BC guy. I mean, a super bright guy, super wonderful guy to be around, and really, really, really good football player. So I think just rattled off a bunch of them. I don't know if. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to mention the captains. Um, yeah, Tanner Carafa and Ben Glines were named uh, captain for the two captains for the 2019 team. Uh, it was really cool when we announced them. You, you know, the team just erupted. I mean, you know, you can tell when it's really meaningful to them. And it was really meaningful with these guys. Um, and you know what's beautiful? Even though it's not a very big senior class at all, um, 
there's really good leadership in that class in small numbers. And so these two captains are going to be fabulous representatives of Boston College. But in addition to them, they have a bunch of other seniors in there that are, you know, guys that are tremendous leaders like John Phillips and Ben uh, and um, um, Jake Burt and Christian Garrison and Karaba Drizzy. And I mean, they're tremendous guys. So I'm looking forward to it. I think there'll be a strong nucleus of leadership in this football team. And these guys take great pride. Last year's class did an unbelievable job of setting the, really setting the culture. You know, like we've been something we've been working on for years, right? But I thought it was phenomenal last year. And these guys have picked that up, and it's so important to them. So they're running with that. And so once again, we have a really good culture. And that's a credit to the, uh, to the older guys in our program. You know, there's a certain standard that's been set of how you're going to conduct yourself. And to be a BC man and what that means, there's a standard. And, and these guys are holding the young guys to it, and they're, and they're kind of appreciating that and falling in line with that. So that's been a good thing. Uh, I actually wanted to ask about Ben Glantz because I know he's both running back and yep. receiver. Is that – because of his skill set, his attitude, what is it about him as a as a football? He seems like one of those old school football players. Right, you got it. Yeah, all of the above. I mean, he's a he's a talented receiver, a talented running back. Um, he gives us tremendous flexibility. We can be in a two back set in no time with him at receiver and motioning back in the backfield. If we have an injury injury issues, I mean, he's a legitimate back that people would love to have in this conference playing with. Um, so, you know. All the above. And Travis Levy is in the same mold. So it seems like the kind of guy who just loves playing football. Oh, he loves ball. He's coming out this morning for practice. He's coming out of the locker room high fiving me. I mean, jacked up. He is a but like you know, as Frank Prina, who was our strength coach before, and as Scott McClafferty this year says, I mean he is if you had to pick probably the you know, there's a there's a very few guys, I mean, you talk about like ultimate warriors, he's one of them. I mean, he is a highly trained, conditioned athlete, you know, he loves it, just loves it, yeah. Two more guys? <clears throat> just because I want to know, uh, about A.B. Does it feel like, I mean, does, for A.B., there's no injury, like, he's, what, like, the fourth most experienced quarterback in the conference, like, I don't want to call it, like, a clean slate, but it's like the first season he has to go in with nothing behind him. Like, what kind of difference does that make? Uh, yeah, a lot. He's had a great camp. Anthony Brown has had a great camp. Um, he's made a lot of plays. Uh, he's got good, really total command of the offense. He's pushing players on the, uh, on the field. And uh, we feel very good that a Anthony's headed right now to have a, have a heck of a, a year. And like you said, I mean, you're talking about a guy now who's been a two-year starter. And he's been through it, whether it be through injury and ups and downs in different games and that's what we call, you know, being a veteran guy, a grizzled up guy, having been through some adversity. And so we're at the point where we're looking for big things out of Anthony this year. And uh, that's a huge deal. And you know, we've duly documented for, you know, I've said it and people say it all over the country, you know, you know, that quarterback position is so critical to, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you take another step? Well, one of the ways to take another step is you have a veteran quarterback that plays at a high level. That's one of them. And we've got some other things that we've got to get done. But he's in position right now. And we're excited about him, and his camp has been very reflective of a guy that's ready to really continue to grow and develop. How does how have you seen AJ kind of? I know obviously, like last year, didn't play the way he wanted to in terms of like injury story. How did he accept or deal with or grow from some of the challenges he might have? Like, well, I think he took him on. He knew he had to develop in, in third down, pass protection. Um, he's really taken his body to another level. Um, I don't want to say I'm scared to even say it, right? It's just it's only Monday, but he's been he's been super healthy. Um, I mean, he looks game ready, strong, fast, really on top of his game. You have a conversation about what took place on the field. He can spit it back to you. It's not like, uh, well, you know, no. It's very matter of fact. This is what I saw. This is what happened. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, he's he's, he's at a preseason camp like Anthony has of a veteran player who's on top of his game. Um, he too had to deal with the whole roller coaster ride of having success and what that can bring to you, and has, had to learn how to handle that better. Right? We, we all have to learn how to handle that better, and the ups and downs of notoriety. So I think it's all been a evolution, um, and it, you know you'd like to think, and all signs certainly indicate it that. 
he's poised and ready to have, you know, knock on wood, a real healthy but a great year. So I'm excited myself to watch him. Steve, thank you. All right, guys, thank you. Yeah.